Shalom, my name is Daniel Rose. I'm the Director of Educational Programming for Yasod. Welcome to our Rosh Hashanah vlog. I'd like to share with you uh, an idea from the Yamim Noraim, from the Days of Awe, that can be found in the liturgy of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And I'd also like to explore it in the thought of three Jewish thinkers, Rabbi Adin Steinsatz, Rabbi Sarah Horowitz, and Dr. Edith Eger. So the idea that I'd like to explore is the tension between the concept that we are passive with God deciding our fate for the year ahead and in fact judging us on Yom, on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur versus our ability to take our own destiny in our own hands and to avert God's decision or influence God's decision in some way. So let's take a look at this in the central tefillah that we say on both Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, a very powerful tefillah called Unatana Tokef. In this tefillah, in the most poetic and beautiful language, the concept that we pass before Hashem as sheep before a shepherd while he decides on our fate is expressed. As a shepherd's searching gaze meets his flock, as he passes every sheep beneath his rod, so you too pass yours, count and number and regard the soul of every living thing. And you rule off the limit of each creation's life, and write down the verdict for each. On Rosh Hashanah it is written, and on Yom Kippur it is sealed. How many will pass away, and how many will be born? Who will live, and who will die? Who in his due time, and who before? These words seem more haunting and more powerful and relatable this year perhaps than any other as we all struggle with the uncertainty of life and the fragility of life. But if we look at the tefillah again, that's not where it ends. It ends with a very, very powerful declaration that actually our destiny is in our own hands. The tefillah concludes Utushuva, Utufila, Utstaka, Marvirin, Edruagazeira. But repentance, prayer and charity can avert the evil decree. Ultimately, our destiny is in our own hands. We are the one that decides what happens to us based on our acts and our lifestyle and the way we live our lives. I'd like to take this idea, this sense of, of personal responsibility um, and taking our destiny into our own hands and explore it in the thought of, of three thinkers. The first is Rabbi Eidin Steinsatz, um, a Talmudic scholar, uh, a Hasidic thinker, a Jewish philosopher who has made a tremendous uh, impact on the Jewish world and unfortunately passed away last month. Rabbi Steinsatz writes the following on Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is not just the point from which the year starts. It is a day that is connected to the year in the same way that the head relates to the body. On Rosh Hashanah we are to build a year, a new year. We are to instill in the year life and goodness and thereby fashion a new and different year. If one merits it, he can revitalise many others. At the very least he can revitalise himself and cause the whole body to follow him, to follow the head. Rabbi Steinsatz here is reflecting on the somewhat strange name that we have for our Jewish New Year. Rosh Hashanah really means the head of the year, not the, a new year. And he's saying that that is teaching us a message that it, Rosh Hashanah is the head of the year and just as the head is what decides what happens to the rest of the body, so we can decide what happens in our year ahead on Rosh Hashanah. On Rosh Hashanah, we can make a decision on how we're going to live our life for the rest of the year. The next thing I'd like to share with you a thought from is Rabbi Sarah Horowitz, co-founder and president of Maharat, the first institution to ordain Orthodox women as clergy. She is a well-renowned uh, Jewish thinker and scholar and educator. She writes, change intertwined with willingness to give something up is a key ingredient of Teshuvah. The Torah narratives that we read on Rosh Hashanah, the stories of Akedat Tzach, the binding of Isaac, and Chana, who agreed to her, that her unborn child would be dedicated to the service of God, challenged us to reflect on what we are willing to give up, what we must sacrifice for the greater good so that we can make both changes within ourselves as well as global changes, making our world a more just place. For Rabbi Horitz, the essence of Shiva is sacrifice. But what I'd like to focus on here is that it's down to us to make these sacrifices and to make these changes and that it is us that decides ultimately on, on what our next year and beyond will look like.
The final thinker I'd like to share with you is Dr. Edith Eager, who only really became famous in 2017 with the publication of her book, The Choice. She was 90 at the time. She's a world-renowned psychologist until then, but published her memoirs of surviving Auschwitz and how it impacted her thought, her life, her profession in 2017. In her book, she makes a distinction between victimization, what happens to you, and victimhood, how you respond to what happens to you. This is what she says. We are all likely to be victimized in some way in the course of our lives. At some point, we will suffer some kind of affliction or calamity or abuse caused by circumstances or people or institutions over which we have little or no control. This is life and this is victimization. It comes from the outside. In contrast, victimhood comes from the inside. No one can make you a victim but you. We become victims not because of what happens to us, but when we choose to hold on to our victimization. We develop a victim's mind, a way of thinking and being that is rigid, blaming, pessimistic, stuck in the past, unforgiving, punitive and without healthy limits or boundaries. This inspiring idea, and in fact her life story, sounds similar to Viktor Frankl. Both these thinkers urge us to decide not what happens to us, but how we react and how we decide to respond to the things that happen in our life. So Dr. Eager, together with Robert Horowitz's idea of taking our own destiny in our hands uh, with sacrifice, deciding what will be. And Rabbi Steinsaltz thought that Rosh Hashanah is called Rosh Hashanah because it's the head of the year. And as the head, at the head of the year, it decides, just like our head decides what will be with our body. So the head of the year, Rosh Hashanah, will decide what will our coming year will look like. These three thinkers are all putting the onus on ourselves. Not to passively wait to see what will happen or what the world will throw at us, but rather we decide how we respond and how we will be. And I think that this is a a really important idea in a world where we can control so little at the moment, we can always control how we respond and how we will react and the year that we will will have and the people that we will become. Um, Wishing you all a Shana Tova Umutuka, a happy and sweet year of only health and happiness and joy to you and all of your family. Shana Tova.